Today I'm taking you on a week-long mountain biking vacation to British Columbia's famous Vancouver Squamish Whistler region. This trip plan will be suitable for intermediate to expert level riders. I live in North Vancouver and I've been riding the North Shore now for over 30 years and have now ridden most of the trails in this region. These three mountain bike regions will offer you world-class mountain biking trails as well as numerous other fun outings such as hiking, water sports, funky restaurants and craft breweries. So why ride Vancouver, Squamish and Whistler? These three regions offer a combined number of trails that well run into the hundreds and many of which you've probably seen on YouTube ridden by your favorite riders. And each region offers its own unique type of trails ultimately offering an unparalleled range of trail diversity. The North Shore of Vancouver is world famous for its man-made wooden features, including skiddies, log rides, boardwalks, ladder bridges, wooden berms, A-frames, teeter-totters, jumps and drops, as well as naturally occurring rock rolls and slabs. The emphasis here is more on technical riding skills and achieving a sense of accomplishment in riding some of these daring features. On the other hand, Squamish has more modern built trail designs, offering sweet. numerous fast, flowy berm trails Real suitable sweet. for a wide range of riders. They also have their share of steep rock slabs and incredible viewpoints at the higher elevations. Whistler is primarily famous for the downhill park located at the world-class Whistler Black Home Ski Resort. But we won't be dominated by the downhill park. Whistler also has dozens of other outstanding trails where we will need to earn our elevation via long, challenging climbs up to the alpine level where we will also enjoy incredible sweeping views of Whistler Village below and the surrounding mountain ranges. In following our rides, we will seek out the very best apres riding experience the locals have to offer. In each region, we'll sample some of the best of the local outdoor pubs, funky restaurants, and craft breweries. When should you plan your trip? For the best mountain bike riding seasons, I would focus on the summer season, generally between June and the end of September. Many of the best trails, especially those at the higher elevations, can be overly wet or snowed in during the rest of the year. The Vancouver and Squamish riding regions start at an elevation just above sea level and typically climb to the highest elevation trails somewhere to the 800-900 meter level. Seventh Secret in North Vancouver starts at just over 800 meters and top of Meadow the Grizzly in Squamish tops out at 920 meters. To ride the Lord of the Squirrels you need to climb up to the 1800 meter range and to ride the top of the world at the Whistler Downhill Park it will take you to the top of the ski hill at 2100 meters. So the riding season in Vancouver will be the longest of the three regions we'll explore. Riders in Vancouver with an abundance of rock armored or all weather trails can nearly ride all year long on the lower elevation trails, even in wet conditions. The riding season in Whistler is typically the shortest. From the monthly weather profiles for each region, you'll see that in order to ride the least rainy and the warmest months, it's best to plan your vacation somewhere between May and October, with a strong preference for July and August. So I would also say that the summer riding conditions in the Vancouver to Whistler corridor would offer a very attractive riding alternative during this season compared to the regions in southern United States such as Arizona, Utah and California where it may be excessively hot to ride. So what's the best trip plan? For this one week vacation plan I'd suggest two days of riding in each of Vancouver, Squamish and Whistler. Start the trip in Vancouver and ending in Whistler. If you find extra time on your hands and want to ride some more, once you've experienced all three regions, you can tack on extra days to your favorite region on your return back to Vancouver. If you want to plan for two weeks, then I would adjust as shown here. So for this specific ride plan, in Vancouver, we'll ride the Mount From region, including Seven Secrets, Expresso, Leopard, Crinkum Crankum, Kirkford and Bobsled. And in the Mount Seymour region, we'll ride John Deere, Pangor and Boogie Nights. For days one and two, we'll start our trip in North Vancouver, a suburb of the greater metro Vancouver region, in a city with about 85,000 people. North Vancouver, or as it's fondly called, the Shore, being on the North Shore of the metro Vancouver region, has an iconic reputation for building some of the most challenging, gnarly, and creative wooden structures to ride. On day one, our first ride will begin on my favorite loop of Mount Fromm. We'll start with a brief climb up the gravel trail on the old mountain highway to the top of Bobsled for a quick warm-up run. Then we'll again climb the highway up to the top of Seven Secret and ride from there down to Espresso and then back along Baden Powell. Seven Secret offers a steep descent trail with sharp cobblestone switchbacks and a few technical features. Espresso is likely the most popular trail on Mount Brom. It's generally a fun, flowy single track with numerous fun wooden features. and a couple of challenging rock rolls for the more nervy rider, but also has numerous smooth berm corners lower down. 
over the past few years, extensive trail maintenance has made it much more fun and flowy, appealing to a wider range of rider, but it still retains some of its old school features. We'll then do a third lap, climbing back up to the top of Leopard, and then down to Crinkum Crankum, and then Kirkford back to our parking lot. Leopard's known for its numerous skinnies to test your balance along an undulating trail. Crinkum reverts to a more classic, steep North Shore terrain with armored switchbacks and finishing with a couple of steep ladder bridges. Kirkford features dozens of smooth, tight switchbacks to demonstrate cornering ability, but also has a couple of wooden roll downs, and it ends on a log roll with a lateral exit. For riders looking for an even bigger challenge, I would recommend the wooden skinny features, including a couple of the teeter totters on pipeline, for either the double black diamond, ladies only, or boundary trails. But make sure you check out each of the challenging features en route before attempting. On day two, we'll ride on Mount Seymour. We will start with a climb up Good Sir Martin to the top of the very flowy and moderately steep John Deere, and follow that with a second lap up Good Sir Martin again, and ride down the more technically challenging Pangor and Boogie Nights. The John Deere Trail is probably the best flow trail in the Mount Seymour area of Vancouver. This intermediate ranked trail offers a 170 meter, mostly smooth descent, with a few technical features which also have ride arounds for the less adventurous. Pangor is one of the North Shore's iconic rides. It's a gnarly but very popular trail filled with classic optional features including skinnies, logs, drops, and natural technical features with ride arounds. Loki Nights is more flowy and burny with a number of jumps and it ends with a roller coaster. For those seeking a greater technical challenge, we could try out the Double Black Diamond Boogeyman Trail or Severed D for a steep, gnarly descent. Boogeyman is filled with classic mandatory A-frames, skinnies, steep drops, jumps, rollers, doubles, and even a roller coaster. It's one of the more difficult Seymour trails due to its exposure, steepness, and consequences. Alternatively, though seeking a more intermediate and flowing trail, we can ride a sequence including salamander and sticks and stones. Following these rides, we'll hang out at the Black Bear Pub and Wild Eye Brewing for outdoor beers and pub food. Bravo Cucina for tasty Italian, and Cruatai for more exotic tastes. We'll start our mornings with coffee at JJ Beans or Delaney's Cafe. For other activities in Vancouver, there's the famous 900 meter elevation hike up the Grouse Grind to the lodge at the top where locals like to race each other up the mountain and see if you can beat my 36 minute personal best time, a time I achieved when I was much younger. At the top, you'll see sweeping views of the Metro Vancouver region as far as the ice can see or further past the Grouse Mountain Ski Resort, take the three to four hour hike out to Crown Mountain. There's also an easy walk in Lynn Valley Headwaters Park to the suspension bridge over a canyon. And there's also a great place to go for a refreshing swim or watch a sunset on Ambleside Beach located in nearby West Vancouver. But if a full on beach scene is your thing, then head to Kitsilano Beach in Vancouver's west side. For days three and four, we'll drive about 80 kilometers up the scenic Sea to Sky Highway to Squamish. Squamish is a town of about 20,000 people. They claim to be the outdoor capital of Canada, and they make a good case for it. The locals are passionate about their skiing, biking, climbing, fishing, and windsurfing. For day three, we will start with likely the most popular flowy intermediate sequence in Squamish, riding first the Half Nelson Trail, and followed up by a rip down the three segments of Suda Suga. But if the group's very fit, then before descending down Half Nelson, I would take the higher climb up to the top of Meadow of the Grizzly. Meadow of the Grizzly is steep, fast, and flowy, with high, sharp, switchback bank corners followed by a long, fast runout. The lower section enters a meadow with a clear cut in the forest, offering sweeping views of the surrounding mountain ranges and the town of Squamish. Half Nelson is probably Squamish's most popular trail. Oh yeah, smooth and bright out. Nice. It offers an exhilarating, smooth, fast, and flowy descent. Suda Suga has three segments to the trail, offering riders huge Burmy S turns and numerous roller jump opportunities. This sequence of trails is ranked as blue intermediate and is very rideable for nearly every level of rider. For day four, we'll ride in the Ellis Lake region and start with a climb up to Mickey's Magic for a flowy trail with some air, a trail more like a downhill park. 
Then we'll head over to Rupert for a technical black diamond level trail, offering a half dozen steep slabs, rock rolls, exposed bench cuts, and some interesting ladder bridges. Then we'll head over for a second loop on Pamplemousse for a ripping descent, probably the most high speed trail we will encounter. Pamplemousse is a sequence of seemingly never ending switchback berms, requiring advanced cornering and jumping skills. For those interested in some more technical riding, I would look at riding Leave of Absence for a ride similar to that on Rupert, or the sequence including entrails over to Room with a View, which involves riding a number of skinnies and ends with a steep slab section. For the apres riding experience in Squamish, we'll hang out at the Howe Sound Brewery for great atmosphere, beers and pub food. And the Backcountry Brewing for more of the same. And the Watershed Grill for a great outdoor patio beside the Squamish River. We'll have our morning breakfast and lunch at the Chief Big D's or Zephyr Cafe in the Old Town. For other activities in Squamish, there are my favorite hikes up to the Squamish Chief and the Alpine Meadow at Water Sprite Lake or take the Sea to Sky Gondola for outstanding views of Squamish and the Howe Sound region. For days 5 and 6 we'll take another short half hour drive up to Whistler. On day 5 we'll ride the Whistler Blackcomb Downhill Park. If you don't have a downhill caliber bike I'd suggest you rent one for the day since the downhill park can be very hard and less robust bike design and you might want a more suitable bike to ride the tabletop jumps and wide bike corners. We can ride numerous laps to downhill park and explore all over the mountain. But I would suggest we start with laps on Crank It Up and Blue Velvet and the Carbonzo Zone and Down South Park and the Circus and the Creekside Zone. All of these trails are rated as Blue Intermediate and offer riders very fun, fast, fully trails with berms, bumps, banks and bridges. But we can't leave the downhill park without attempting the expert level Top of the World Trail where we take the chair up to the top of the mountain and enjoy incredible alpine views of the entire mountain range before embarking on a ripping nearly 1500 meter technical descent to the valley below. And on day 6 it won't get any easier. For very fit riders we'll climb up nearly a thousand meters to Mount Sprout via the Into the Mystic Trail and then ride through an alpine meadow along On the Rocks and Happy Hour and descend back down to Whistler on the Lord of the Squirrels Trail. Technically this sequence of trails is quite manageable. What makes them difficult is the significant climb up the Mystic Trail to the access to the Alpine. But you'll be rewarded with outstanding views on both of these first two trails. On the Rocks is fairly flat and smooth providing a fairly high speed ride through these Alpine meadows. It's not very technical and is suitable for intermediate level riders. Happy Hour is slightly more technical. Ranked as an expert trail which includes sections with exposed bench cuts but takes you out to the Sprout Mountain Lookout offering stunning views of the Whistler Valley. The return to Whistler requires a descent along the Lord of the Squirrels Trail, which is the most steep and technical of these trails, but still ranked for intermediate riders. Unfortunately, due to its very high elevation and likelihood of snow on the trail, this ride is only open during the August to September time frame. As an alternative to this sequence of trails, and for a more technical descent, with a dozen steep slab ride segments, we'll ride the comfortably known descent section. Or for those wanting to practice their balance and ride a couple of dozen or more skinnies, we can ride the A River Runs Through It loop. And lastly, for those who want an easier day on the trails, we can explore the Lost Lake region where trails are way more intermediate caliber and can be ridden directly from the center of town. For our Whistler restaurant selections, we'll start our mornings in Whistler at the classic Southside Diner and Creek Bread or Camp Coffee for coffee and breakfast and finish our day at Whistler Brewing and the Red Door Bistro inside Roland's Pub for beers and pub food. If you want more upscale dining, it's probably best to wander around Whistler Village on foot. The village has dozens of excellent restaurants and outdoor patios to hang out in. And for other activities to do in Whistler, there's the ski resort for great scenic views of the region and lunch or drinks on the patio at the Roundhouse. There are great hikes up to Rainbow Lake and Chequemus Lake and there's the Whistler bungee jumping at Chequemus Canyon just south of town. For those who seek a two-week vacation plan, as noted above, I'd ride a few more days in each of Squamish and Whistler and possibly include Pemberton which is a half hour drive north of Whistler. And for Pemberton, I'd ride a sequence that includes Stoke Chicken, Cream Puff and Rudy's. So there you have it, how can you not get excited about this vacation? If you're interested in camping, my favorite campgrounds are Alice Lake and Squamish, Cal Cheek just south of Whistler, and Nairns Falls just north of Whistler.
The first and last campgrounds are reservable through the BC Provincial Campground website. Well, that's all for now. In future vacation videos, I'll cover Colorado, British Columbia's East Kootenai region, and New Zealand, so please stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you next time.